Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Today, the witch of November come stealing early. We're gonna test out some firewood. The best firewood is what you get free from the Queen's own back 40. Six cords of the finest knotty fir, lodgepole pine. Now any Easterner worth his salt wouldn't give you the steam off his piss for a face cord of it, but Around here, you got to piss with the cock you got. And the cock I got happens to be the Queen's. Speaking of ready mercury, plenty of fellas here, King Shits of Turd Island, will tell you what for and how to get there about firewood. I ain't that. Just a dude. It's unquestionable, however, that hardwood is far girthier in the hand than softwood. Now, what is the difference? The growth rings. Essentially, the hardwood is deciduous. That means it loses its foliage, including tamarack, which is coniferous, but loses its foliage. You know, there's some overlap there. But hey, 3 a.m., a mouth is a mouth. See the growth rings on that? It means it grew real fast, but it's real soft. So it's not nearly as dense. And here is the fur. Now this guy is ash, a right unholy terror of a tree to split, but gorgeous, gorgeous once you get a burning. We got our birch here, nearly the minimum viable hardwood, but it comes with its own kindling. The bark is highly flammable and it peels right off. Great, makes for great kindling. A Russian olive, grows like a weed around here, very Mediterranean despite the freezing hoth-like temperatures in the winter. It's a very arid around here and this Russian olive grows nice. It is stinky. It's got a top note of pipe tobacco. It's a very smelly wood to burn, very smoldery. Some fellas don't like it because it uh, goops up the pipes, but who amongst us hasn't had a <laughs> chimney fire in the middle of the night? This here is a big chunk of hash. We'll get rid of that one. I want everything to be roughly the same size, not the same size, but the same mass so that we can compare apples to oranges. This here looks like cottonwood. It could be cottonwood or it could be aspen. It could be poplar. The younger trees have that look to it. I think it is cottonwood. If you read your kids that uh, fantastic kids book, Dip Netting with Dad, the cottonwood is what they use for smoking salmon. Makes a delicious smoked salmon. Two kilos-ish cottonwood, aspen, poplar. Two kilos of fur, demarked. Speaking of which, when the gas prices go through the roof, that is for our American buddies, through the rough, you're gonna see an uptick in ax and chainsaw injuries. You're gonna to wanna to hit your brokerage up for derivatives of ax futures or some sort of ax based thumb cryptocurrency. 2100 grams, I will shave a little bit off of there, of ash. Hard as woodpecker lips that stuff, good enough. 4.4 pounds in human readable units of birch. Just shy 2,000 grams of Russian olive. We'll give that pine, <laughs> as the gong goes, we'll give that pine a fighting chance. 2.3 kilos. Here's red hot sap in your eye. Speaking of Freddie Mercury Saturday night, COVID. You're windy outside. I got some backdrafting. Hmm. Got a puppy pile United Nations style. Cottonwood, fir, ash, poplar, pine, and Russian olive. And I get this wedding reception started with some tequila shooters and the chicken dance. Get the rest of these dancers on the floor.
I think that lanky shake of fur has an unfair advantage being shielded. Let's give her a, a poke and a prod. See if we can't uh, I grant you the resinous coniferous trees, that is fir, pine, have a distinct advantage, but for entertainment, in that they spits and sparkin. They got little pockets of sap would explode and pop and crack and so forth. I think what you're hearing there is the fur. To my ear, that sounds like the fur and not the pine. The hardwoods are quite a bit calmer. Pine is doing far better than expected. Might be the shape of her walk. Big chungus. Get out of here. Warming up the flies now. <laughs> Coming out of hibernation. That birch is looking a little worse for the wearing. And that cottonwood, aspen, poplar. That's three carters of an inch proud of the hole and uh, flames licking out the end of her. I think the Russian olive is the favorite at this point. It might be part and parcel of its positioning, however, juxtaposed with the cottonwood in the far corner. Yeah. A chunk of pine is messing with my mojo. You give her a little poke there. <laughs> We got a couple already didn't make the full pull. The cottonwood slash aspen. Still burning off volatiles. The fur, nothing but carbon matrix left. There is some sublimation there that is a solid carbon going to gas. You can see back there, right in the middle of the screen. And the ash, surprisingly completely gone. Same thing, just the carbon matrix sublimating. We still have some off-gassing from the birch and the pine. Just fucking slaying it. If I didn't see it with my own two eyes, that ponderosa pine, I think I called that lodgepole before. It's ponderosa. It, it, it's blowing my mind. Just about everything's gone. Nice coals, the Russian olive, still off-gassing a little bit, but that might be coming from the pine. That cottonwood, still off-gassing a little bit. The fir, just gonzo.
I never would have expected this result at all by I, the pine coming out on top. It was still the last to flame out all of those volatile still off gassing. Now what we'll do is we'll just check. It goes to show that measuring wood by face cord, that is by volume, doesn't give you a good indication of the heat quality because it really depends on the mass of the wood and because the softwoods are much less dense, it takes a lot more volume to get the same mass. But ultimately, carbohydrate foam is carbohydrate foam, whether it's more dense or less dense. Seems like you're going to get the same amount out of the wood if you measure it by weight. And of course, water content. We can all agree that there's something viscerally enjoyable about sitting in front of the fire. Now, this was not the result I was expecting. And I'm going to catch some heat, I'm sure. Because a hardwood fire is so much nicer than a spits and sparks and softwood fire. We got to redo this test. I think we need to have the exact same shape. And we also, what we'll do is we'll make, say, little cubes and we'll have the same shape and the same mass, but not the same volume. I'll see where that takes us. So thanks for watching. Also, out of this, the shape of the split is really, really important for the length. Of burn. If you're looking for heat, of course, you just pack it right full of kindling and uh, set your hacienda on fire. But if you're looking for a nice long burning fire, it's clear that the bigger the chungus, 